In this question, we're asked what mass of steam at 100 degrees C must be mixed with 150 grams of ice at its melting point in a thermally insulating container to produce water at 50 degrees Celsius. So importantly, what we've got here is a insulating container, a thermally insulating container, which contains some amount of steam, mass of steam, which is an unknown quantity, that's what I want to know, and I've got some amount of ice, some mass, we know what that is, that's 150 grams, and it's an insulating container, so that means that no energy, no heat can be either added to the container or taken away from the container. This tells me that the energy inside the system is conserved and the sum of my heats must be zero. Now after some time, this system is going to equilibrate inside the insulating container and I'm going to end up with a container which is just full of water at 50 degrees Celsius and it won't change its temperature from then on, it's in equilibrium. How does this happen? Well, these two systems have to uh, come into equilibrium by exchanging some heat. Some heat flows out of the steam, it flows from the hotter object into the colder object. So let's think about those processes. So first of all, I can say that uh, well, heat's going to flow um, out of the steam. So let's think about the heat which is associated with, first of all, condensing the steam, so changing the phase uh, of the steam from being a vapour uh, to being a liquid and then that leaves us with some hot water at 100 degrees Celsius. That hot water is also going to give up some heat and that's going to be uh, associated with cooling the water from 100 degrees Celsius down to 50 degrees Celsius. So that amount of, that's the total amount of heat that can come out of the steam. And where's that heat going to go? It can't go out into the environment, it has to all go into the ice. So some of that heat is going to have to melt the ice, to change the phase of the ice. And then also it has to take the ice which is now water at zero degrees Celsius and has to raise its temperature up to 50 degrees Celsius. That's all that's going on. So now all we need to do is find out uh, what each one of these terms are. Two of those are heats associated with changing the temperature of an object. And we know if we're changing the temperature of an object, then the heat associated with that is given by mc delta t. It depends upon the amount of material I've got, the mass of the object, the type of material, the specific heat, and how much the temperature changes by. And the other two terms deal with phase changes. So there they only care about the mass of the material and the kind of phase change we have. We have two phase changes. We've got a, a latent heat of vaporization and a latent heat of fusion we have to worry about. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start off by looking at the heat associated with changing uh, of temperature. So here in the second term, uh, my water is going to change from 100 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. So how much water do I have? Well, remembering this is the, the steam which has initially been condensed. So the, the amount of water at 100 degrees Celsius will be the same as the amount of steam that I had, the mass of the steam, multiplied by the specific heat of water, multiplied by the change in temperature, T final minus T initial. Now the final temperature here is 50 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature, which was 100. So I notice that inside that bracketed term, that's actually going to be a negative number. So the second term here is going to be some, some negative number. And that makes sense because uh, I notice that some of my heats here has to be zero. So some of these terms are going to be positive and some of these are going to be negative. We'll find out that if I've got a positive change in my temperature, if my final temperature is larger than my initial temperature, I must have had to add heat in. So that would be a positive quantity Q. If I decrease the temperature of my object, if my final temperature, like 50, is less than my initial temperature, I must have removed heat. Okay, I'm removing heat from the steam and I'm going to put it into the ice. Okay, so the other uh, heat associated with a change in temperature was when we had the water at zero degrees Celsius and we raised the temperature up to 50 degrees. So here, how much water I have? Well, that would, would be the, the water which was originally ice, so it's going to be the mass of the ice times the specific heat of water times the change in temperature. The final temperature is 50, initial temperature is zero. 
In that case, the bracketed term is a positive quantity because I'm adding heat to the ice. If that makes sense. Right, so then we've got to look at these other two uh, heats associated with a phase transition. Now, importantly, whereas the minus sign automatically turns up for uh, a change in uh, the heat associated with changing a temperature, we've got to manually put it in here. And so if I'm, if I'm adding heat to the water at zero degrees to get to 50 degrees Celsius, I think that that's the same direction as if I was to add heat into ice, it would melt the ice. So I'm expecting that the heat associated with the, the change in the phase of my ice, so the mass of the ice, uh, changing the phase from a, from a solid to a liquid, that's going to be the latent heat of a fusion. That has to be a positive energy. Okay, I'm adding energy in here. It's the same as my diagram here. The arrow tells me the direction that my heat's, heat's flowing. It's flowing out of the steam, so it's leaving the steam. It's negative and it's flowing into the ice, so it's positive. Okay, and that just leaves us with thinking about the heat associated with condensing the steam. Once again, uh, that depends upon the mass of the steam, how much steam we had, and the latent heat of, uh, in this case here, it's vaporization, because we're changing from a vapor uh, to a um, uh, to a liquid, but remember that the heat here is leaving the steam. So this has to be a negative quantity. You have to add in that that minus sign there. Okay. So here I have one negative number, another negative number, one positive number, and a positive number. And so those things have to all sum to be zero. So what I really want to do now is to work out the mass of the steam. So I'm going to make the steam the subject of my equation here. And I want to do this in two parts. So firstly, let's start by taking these two terms across to the left-hand side and taking the mass of the steam out as a common factor. You'll notice that this term here is negative, so when I move it across to the left, it becomes positive. This term here is also negative, so when I move that across to the, the left-hand side, it becomes positive as well. So I can factorise out the mass of steam, the latent heat of vaporisation, plus 50 times the specific heat of water. That's these two terms across the left-hand side. That must be equal to, on the right-hand side here, the mass of the ice, factorised outside of the latent heat of fusion, plus, once again, 50 times the specific heat of water. So we're almost there, I'm just giving myself a little bit more room. How much steam do I need to have? Well, that's going to be equal to the mass of the ice multiplied by the ratio of LF plus 50C divided by the latent heat of vaporization plus 50C. Remembering that um, when, even though we're not specifically given these things, we can look them up. The, the specific heat for water is 4184 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. The latent heat of uh, fusion is equal to uh, 334 kilojoules per kilogram. The latent heat of vaporization is equal to 2257 kilojoules per kilogram. And remembering the mass of the ice that we had originally was equal to 150 grams or 0 0.15 kilograms, just to put everything in the same units. Okay, so if we do that, then we can write down that the mass of the steam is equal to 0 0.15 times this ratio. And this ratio here, putting the numbers in, is equal to 0 0.220. Otherwise, uh, we can write that out as 0 0.033 kilograms or 33 grams is the amount of steam that I would require in order to end up with just a mixture of water at 50 degrees Celsius. So I should quickly ask, does that make sense? Well, one check I could have, if I just let the latent heat of vaporization and the latent heat of fusion if I made those two the same number, then this ratio here would become 1. I'd have the same amount of steam um, as I would have ice. And that would kind of make sense because the 
energy associated with changing the phases would be the same, and then the energy associated with going, changing the temperatures, which is either up by 50 degrees or down by 50 degrees, would be the same as well. So that kind of makes sense.